All right. Well, uh, welcome everyone to our intro to EcoSchools webinar for 2023-24. We're really excited to be joining and connecting with everyone today in this live webinar. Uh, so we'll be going over an overview of the EcoSchools program as well as foundational information to help you getting started with the program this year. Uh, over the next approximately half an hour, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. So thanks again so much for everyone taking a bit of time out of their day to, to uh, join us. Okay, so just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, technical support, um, everyone's, I'm sure, quite familiar with these tips, um, but if you are having any trouble, please do let us know in the chat. And also remember that the webinar will be recorded. So if you um, want to revisit it, uh, we'll be sending it out uh, afterwards. And of course, get comfortable, grab a snack or water um, as we go through the, the recording or the webinar today. Um, one other note, we have enabled automated captions. So if you like, you can turn on closed captions if that's helpful for you. Uh, in the meeting controls area, you should see a show captions button, which appears as two C's. And uh, that's the first image on the screen. So simply click that button and the captions should be enabled. And by clicking the up symbol on the closed captions buttons, you will see additional options, including uh, the ability to adjust the speaking language and access to a full transcript of the webinar. All right, uh, and then before diving in, I would like to take a few moments to read our organizational land acknowledgement. Uh, and we uh, do encourage you to share where you're joining from in the chat. Uh, so EcoSchools is a national charity that supports youth leadership, environmental learning, and climate action. With staff located from coast to coast to coast on both unceded and occupied territories, we recognize the historical and ongoing injustices of colonialism on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We are dedicated to continually develop our personal and organizational role and responsibilities to reconciliation, to support the 94 calls to action, and to integrate Indigenous perspectives and voices into our programming. As an organization, we aim to engage, support, honor, and celebrate diverse cultures, voices, perspectives, and communities across Turtle Island. And we are committed to learning and unlearning by connecting our work to broader projects of social justice, inclusion, and reconciliation. As part of a growing network of schools and partners, we will continue to encourage this reflection, growth, and practice with the communities we serve. And many apologies for my cat in the background who's obviously wanting to say hello today. <laughs> Um, so I'm also just going to share some words about where I'm joining from today. I live and work from Ngojunang, colonially known as Peterborough, Ontario, which is the traditional territory of the Michisagic, Anishinaabeg. And Ngojunang means place at the end of the rapids and speaks to the Otonabee River, which runs through it. Um, I'm very grateful for the land, water, and the fall air that seems to have arrived where I am over the past weekend. And I'm continually grateful for the stewardship of this land that has taken place uh, by Indigenous people since time immemorial and continues to take place to this day. And I commit to acting with respect and reciprocity towards the land and communities around me. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, we are now just going to introduce ourselves as the webinar hosts. So my name is Clara Luke, and I'm a senior program manager with EcoSchools Canada. Um, and I will just pass it over to Courtney to briefly introduce herself. Hi there, I'm Courtney Clark, and I'm the Newfoundland and Labrador Project Program Manager. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. Um, so with that, we'll just go through a little agenda for um, the for today. So we'll first be looking at who we are how EcoSchools supports environmental leadership in schools, especially for those who might be newer to the program and want to learn a little more about us. Uh, we'll then be looking at how to join the EcoSchools movement by taking action and certifying through our EcoSchools certification, which is our 
online platform, which many of you may be familiar with or are getting to know. Uh, we'll look into our many resources that are available to schools and as, as well as some of our featured campaigns this year. Uh, we'll then wrap up by talking about next steps, important deadlines, and uh, then we'll be very happy to take any questions that you have. Um, if any questions do come up through the webinar, please add them to the chat uh, and then we'll address them at the end. Um, and just a reminder to keep your mics muted until we get to that period of the presentation. All right, so we'll get started by looking at who we are. So since 2005, our framework has provided independent reporting and recognition for schools and outdoor education centers reaching over 750,000 students annually. We're the largest bilingual voluntary environmental education uh, certification program for elementary through secondary schools in Canada. And we are open to schools all across Canada. Our curriculum linked framework supports school communities as they assess, track, benchmark, and celebrate environmental excellence, all while nurturing environmental uh, learning and climate action. And here you'll see our mission and our vision. So our mission is to nurture student leaders, reduce the environmental impact of schools, and of course, build whole sustainable school communities. And our vision is every school an eco school from individual behaviors to collective impact. All members of a school community are empowered with the knowledge, skills, perspectives, and desire to act as environmentally responsible citizens. And we are also the operator of the international uh, eco schools or the Canadian operator of the international eco schools program that's overseen by the Foundation for Environmental Education and it's endorsed by the United Nations Environment Program and UNESCO. So as a member of FEE, we're part of this community of uh, 73 other national eco schools programs around the globe. And we also connect our program um, to other international movements and um, goals such as the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which were set by um, in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly. So while each school implements the program at a hyper local level, each eco school um, each eco school's action is directly connected to a minimum of one of the SDGs which can help students and teachers situate themselves and their learning in a global context. And uh, here we have a few ways that um, we're seeing what the program helps schools to do. So building environmental leadership and capacity uh, for staff, students and communities, recognizing excellence with our robust reporting and collective impact framework, of course, connecting to local resources through a strong network of regional and national partners, supporting Canada's commitment to achieving net zero emissions by 2050, and improving the operational efficiency of school buildings. And here's just a little snapshot of how we're growing throughout uh, the country. So last year was our third year of our national growth. Um, we're, we're really thrilled to welcome 173 new schools to our community from over 10 provinces and territories. And we were also really glad to see a number, a whole bunch of returning schools. So 553 uh, returning eco schools that those were just the ones that had achieved over 10 years of certification. So we've got a real strong base in our eco schools community um, and it's continuing to grow. Uh, just a few more stats from last year, if you're interested to see our impact and how it's how it's growing. So as I mentioned before, uh, 750,000 students um, took part in the Eco Schools program. Um, there were over 18,000 actions completed in over uh, 16, uh, 1,641 schools and across 137 school boards and districts. And here are some more specific examples of how we're seeing eco schools uh, connect to specific SDGs. So these are some stats from last year. So uh, 679 schools participated in water related actions, 
that's related to SDG number six, clean water and sanitation. More than 11,000 classrooms optimized their energy efficiency. That was related to SDG number seven, affordable and uh, clean energy. And in the waste reduction area, uh, over uh, 156,000 waste-free waste -free meals were brought to school and over 392,000 kilograms of waste were diverted from landfills uh, connected to SDGs 11 and 12. And um, those are just a few examples of these ways that we're connecting and continuing to connect to uh, broader goals that we're all kind of working together to, to address this uh, climate emergency that, that we're in right now. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little more about how to get involved and certify with the Eco Schools program. So the program is a framework and toolbox for taking action in uh, environmental education. So for students, the program provides opportunities for leadership, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, and a way to learn about sustainability. Uh, for teachers, the program integrates very well into curricula across Canada and offers unique opportunities for learning. And we also see at the school board and district level that the program can result in lower energy and waste outputs uh, for school buildings and that also offers a regional network for schools who are uh, working on goals uh, collectively. And uh, participation in the program allows all members of the school community to get a clear picture of their current environmental practices and take action to reduce their environmental footprint. So the way we see this looking at a school is that um, a group might form of dedicated environmental champions. Uh, we, we refer to these groups as eco teams, but they come in many different shapes and sizes and uh, with many different names. So these are the people at a school who are responsible for leading eco schools actions and initiatives. And they might range from a few members to even whole schools. Uh, but we really do see that they operate best with a diverse membership base, including students, uh, teachers, principal, uh, principal, school administration, custodians, parents, and community partners. Um, so this is just to say that the program can be run in many diverse ways by uh, different groups of people. Um, and we are increasingly seeing the Eco Schools program come into the classroom and um, be integrated and uh, different parts of the program be led by different classes um, who might be focusing on, on different environmental topics. Because as we know, the program or environmental education can really be integrated uh, all throughout the curriculum. So um, a little more about our action-based framework. So um, these actions that we talk about, um, you'll see as uh, Courtney goes into our, our platform a little bit more, uh, but these actions make up the backbone of eco school certification. And they consist of a variety of fun educational projects, campaigns, lessons, and challenges that help schools assess and improve their environmental practices. So they're designed to be flexible and adaptable uh, to all curricula and school types to ensure that the, um, the program is accessible across Canada. So as schools pursue and complete different actions, they report them in their online application. And then at the end of the year, school applications are assessed by our team based on a standard established over uh, 10 years of benchmarking and then they're uh, awarded a final certification level or um, celebrated for their participation in the program. Um, and then we have a simple step-by-step -step process um, for a different way to kind of envision what's going on in the program in a year. So first we have that um, group, the eco team coming together, connecting and um, getting the program started for the year. Then uh, they begin to collaborate by reviewing objectives and setting goals. Next comes planning as schools create a custom environmental action plan. And this is, of course, followed by the engagement of the school community in various environmental actions and campaigns. So getting out there, uh, doing things on the ground, in the schoolyard, in classrooms. And as you go and as you're completing the different actions, um, 
we always encourage, you know, reflecting on successes and opportunities for future improvement. And then, you know, tracking this in your application throughout the year. And then finally, of course, there's celebration, which is a, a key tenant of the program. Uh, where students and school communities can celebrate the hard work that um, they've done. Um, so just a, a little snapshot there. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Courtney, who's going to talk more about the platform and provide some reminders and updates about the year ahead. Thank you, Clara. Um, okay, so the Eco School Certification Application, also known as the ECA, is where schools register for the program. The ECA was launched in 2020 and is the culmination of over three and a half years of consultation and development with stakeholders in the education and environment sectors, including students, teachers, board level staff, and partner organizations. The application has been updated to meet the needs of each unique school community that certifies by being flexible, customizable, data-driven, and accessible. The application houses over 50 environmental and climate change actions with corresponding resources and provide schools with the opportunity to curate a unique action plan that can be updated and re revised throughout the year and year over year. The key features of the ECA include an application that is intuitive, easy to navigate, and more streamlined than past versions of the online application. There is no limit on the number of members that can be added to the school's application, making collaboration between students, teachers, and other school community members easier than ever especially when working in cohorts or remotely. The opportunity for schools to develop their own yearly plan to meet the unique needs, interests, and priorities of their school and community. The option to select from and engage in more than 50 environmental actions, from pollinator garden to reduce harmful single-use plastics, from active and sustainable school travel, and also create your own action for actions that schools may take that are not currently in the application. Each action tracks tailored and shareable metrics, such as waste diversion and greenhouse gas emissions through a distinct impact page. And schools can track their impact over time on the platform and can compare their journey to other schools across the country. As you enter, as you enter each action, there is a variety of information to support you. So this includes information about the action, connections to curriculum, the sustainable development goals, and photos showing how this action has been completed by other schools. There is an action guide, which provides simple steps to completing the action, helpful tools and resources to support schools in learning about the environmental topic and ways take, of taking action. These include tailored eco-schools created resources, as well as resources from subject experts. We'll showcase some of our eco-schools created resources on the next slide. And finally, certification questions, which schools can complete for points toward their certification level. One of the exciting features about our certification platform is the ability to collect and see the impact of schools across the country at a glance. The impact page, which is available to all schools on their ECA account, displays a number of impact stats pulled directly from school applications. The impact page was recently updated to provide even more useful and in-depth information. As seen on the slide, the updated impact page provides many key stats, including waste diverted, carbon dioxide equivalent emissions sequestered from greening activities, trees planted, number of environmental leaders, hours of outdoor learning, number of classrooms optimizes, optimized for energy use, and more. You'll also be able to click into a specific stat to find more information about it and where the data is coming from. On the impact page, you can also toggle between the impact of your school and the collective impact across the country. All actions on the ECA include links to targeted resources to help schools make positive environmental change in a fun and engaging way. Many of the actions have at least one eco-schools created resource, which can be used to help track, promote, or generate ideas for how to carry out these actions. Note that we encourage schools to adapt actions to their unique circumstances. But we hope that these resources will provide some helpful guidance and inspiration for the eco-schools program at your school. They have been tailored to a national audience and include resources such as worksheets, pledges, pledge templates, and guides. 
As schools complete actions and updates on their online application, they can earn points towards certification. The depth and extent of these completed environmental actions will determine the school's final certification level. There are four levels of certification a school can achieve, including bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Any school that creates a plan on the EcoSchool's certification application, but is unable to achieve the minimum points for a certification level, will still be recognized as a participant school. Participant recognition celebrates a school's effort in taking environmental action and acknowledges a school's attempt in becoming EcoSchool certified. Schools that are recognized as participants will be awarded with a digital participant seal and are valuable members of the EcoSchools network, but are not considered certified EcoSchools. We are also continuing with remote or virtual school programs and our outdoor and environmental education centers certification program. Both programs exist outside of the online platform and encourage environmental learning and actions tailored specifically for these two distinct types of, types of education centers. For more information, please reach out to program at ecoschools.ca. Uh, join the movement. So we're now talking about the um, COVID-19. The health and safety of students, staff, and families should always be a top priority. So please make sure to take safety measures and follow board or district policies when you're running your actions. You can find out more information about this at ecoschools.ca slash COVID-19. Now we will talk about some of our new resources and featured campaigns this year to support schools participating in the EcoSchools program this year. We're excited to launch the program with over 50 actions available to schools focused on a wide variety of environmental themes, including outdoor learning, waste reduction, energy conservation, biodiversity, and more. We're also introducing two new action cards this fall. The first is Extend Your Action that offers the opportunity to extend an EcoSchools action to a larger school project. This action will be helpful for schools that are undertaking a campaign or project that goes beyond one of our existing actions and can earn a school up to 10 additional points. This action is now available on the ECA. You can add it to your plan today by searching the action library. And our second new action card is school to school mentorship, which will give schools the opportunity to collaborate with each other to strengthen leadership and environmental impact in school communities across the country. This new action will be available on, in the ECA later this fall. Here are a few upcoming opportunities and campaigns this year that your school might be interested in. Project 2050, so along with certifica a certification seal that schools receive at the end of the school year, schools can also receive achievement badges. These badges incentivize schools to take particular actions in a year. This year, we are continuing to award the Project 2050 badge which recognizes schools for their contribution to a climate resilient future. To receive the badge, schools must complete three or more actions in the Project 2050 pathway. The second is the carton recycling contest. We're excited to announce that we will be holding a carton recycling contest for schools in partnership with the Carton Council of Canada. From October 16th to November 3rd, share your photos of proper carton recycling in action at your school for a chance to win 500 or a thousand dollars. And lastly, School Smart Forest Program. In collaboration with Canada's Forest Trust, we invite you to consider a green alternative to fundraising at your school by contributing to the growth of Canadian forests. To learn more about any of these or other campaigns this year, visit ecoschools.ca slash campaigns. We'd also like to highlight these two opportunities for schools to support hands-on environmental action connected to EcoSchools resources and learning materials. We're excited to continue our partnership with Food Cycle Science to offer the Food Cycler Learning and Action Kit to schools at a reduced price. The Food Cycler provides authentic hands-on learning opportunities for schools of all students of all ages, which can be easily connected to the curriculum and the EcoSchools program. Our partnership with NutraTower offers schools the eco offers the offers eco schools the eco schools Nutra Tower educational package, which includes a Nutra Tower, all of the equipment to get started, lesson plans, plus a workshop from Nutra Tower for a preferred price bundle. 
All of the details about these opportunities are under the EcoSchools market at ecoschools.ca slash market. We also spent the summer revising and creating resources to support schools in their EcoSchools journey. These include this year's certification guide, which is a great starting point for schools. The school sustainability review, which schools can use to plan their actions for the year. The certification rubric that describes the criteria EcoSchools Canada uses to assess the school applications. And our suggested plan pathway document which includes different themes or selections of actions schools may choose to focus on. We also have a robust FAQ webpage that answers questions about the EcoSchools program and online application. We have a variety of webinars, both recorded and live, that will be offered throughout the year, and how-to videos to accompany, accompany some of our most popular FAQs. You can find all these resources and more in our resources webpage at ecoschools.ca slash resources for schools. We have two major communications that go out to our community. All registered schools receive monthly CERT tips messages, which highlight key tips, resources, and deadlines for schools. Likewise, all members of our community can register for the EcoSchools newsletter, which comes out every other month and includes updates on the program, funding opportunities, contests, resources, and more. Now we'll review some of our other key program updates for the year ahead. With a new year also comes new deadlines. The program launched on September 25th to all schools in Canada and is free for all publicly funded schools. The final deadline for schools to submit their application remains the second Friday in May, which this year will be May 10th, 2024. The early bird deadline is April 26th and if schools submit their application on or before this date, they will be eligible for a prize draw. Most schools can register with the program at any time before the final deadline, though we suggest starting earlier in the school year to ensure there's enough time to create and implement their action plan and update their online application. Schools aiming for platinum now need to complete a short survey by the last Friday in February. We'll talk about this more in a moment. The completion of a mid-year deadline requirement for schools to certify at the platinum level has been reintroduced to the program. It was discontinued during the first few years of COVID-19. The platinum eligibility questionnaire is one of the additional criteria required for schools to certify at platinum, which is the highest level of EcoSchool certification and represents a program that is well established and where environmental learning and action is a defining element of the school culture. Specifically, schools must satisfactorily complete the Platinum Eligibility Questionnaire before the last Friday in February. The goal of this questionnaire is to ensure that schools are planning ahead, aware of the expectations of Platinum schools, and are ready to take on this exciting challenge. The questionnaire is built into the EcoSchools certification application. The questionnaire will automatically pop up in the ECA for any school whose plan includes enough actions to potentially accumulate 101 or more points. As a reminder, other platinum requirements include accumulation of the 101 points or more, participation in a 30 minute virtual school visit, which may be required, only a portion of platinum schools are asked to participate in this each year, and a fulfillment of the program elements as described in the certification rubric found in our school resources webpage. So if you're curious about EcoSchools program, but you're not sure if certification is right for you, we highly recommend that you register on the EcoSchools certification application as the first step and explore the 50 plus actions and associated resources available to your school. Remember, registration is not an obligation to certify. It's simply the easiest way to take advantage of the many resources we have to offer and begin your journey towards sustainability. And now uh, a few reminders about how to stay connected with EcoSchools. We have a great website where you can learn more about the program and upcoming campaigns. You can also connect with us through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Twitter is our most dynamic channel with many schools, boards, and general public being involved. If you have a Twitter account, please consider following us and we'll follow you back. 
Before we end, we want to thank you for watching this webinar. We hope you found it helpful. We also want to take the time to thank our funders. EcoSchool's work is made possible by the support of government agencies, foundations, corporate partners, and donors.